What's up everybody, Jason back again with another episode of Vendors where I sit down with the leading wedding industry professionals and answer the questions to help educate couples just like you about all those questions you have about planning your big day. Today we're sitting down with Xenia from Flor Del Monte, a floral design company out of the Pilsen neighborhood in Chicago. Let's get started. Zenia, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. Well, thanks for having me. It's very exciting. Tell me who you are and what do you do? So Flor del Monte has been in the Chicago wedding industry for, I think we're going into year 17 this year. And we started off kind of retail. And then as most people know, the economy, we just went kaput 2007, 2008. So that's when we shifted and we're like, all right, retail's not the way to go. We're going to do weddings. And we started off maybe five or six weddings and we just ballooned within a couple of years to like 40 weddings, 50 weddings. So now we do, we try to keep it at 50 weddings a year. We feel like that's our number. That's a good place for us to keep things still really personal, but we really do weddings. We do, we do corporate too. So we have our corporate accounts um, that we go and we kind of do their events or do their weeklies, but we're in a studio that we specifically made so that all we can do is kind of create and produce for, for events, so we really kind of just nixed out um, the retail, so yeah, that's who we are. We just continue to connect with our, our customers, our people, we call them our people, mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of what pushes us forward every year. You bring up a really good point that working in the wedding industry, we don't see our clients as clients. We, we work with them on a vision, mm -hmm. And that's really important. Can you talk a little about um, bringing a vision to life? You know, some come in very specific and I think it's my job to kind of see, okay, you kind of know what you want. I'm going to give you what you want, you know, or you come in kind of like, I have no idea and then provide the guidance. I want to do both because, you know, our, people approach their weddings very differently. Right. So I do think we, you know, with the couple that comes in kind of already knowing, it's more so fine tuning details because they know that they are either a modern or a clean or a rustic or a romantic. So it's like, okay, how does that translate into flowers? Because you may know that aesthetically, but what kind of flowers give you that? Yeah. So with the couple that comes in kind of very, like this is my style, this is who I am, then you kind of just, you know, put things together. This is what works best for you. Then, but with the couple that really comes in, not knowing what their aesthetic is going to translate into or what it is, it's kind of sharing images with them of our work, you know, asking certain questions like, what do you lean towards? Do you like kind of like a more loose, romantic feel? Or do you like things a little more structured, more tailored? So by using those words, I think we really start to hone in on what makes them like, oh, when you see their lights, like eyes light up. And then you're like, okay, we're going in the right direction. That's cool. Yeah. It's like an ever-changing art form. It can be, yeah. I think that's what makes being with weddings in the wedding industry a little bit more, like especially with design. With a wedding, you really are shifting and changing um, as you go along. So I think being open to that. And then also our clients, what we try to establish early on is really having them trust that you know we have experience we know what we're doing because they may say something that sounds good in theory but obviously right. one thing is to think it sounds great yes <laughs> but to, we know how to work with certain flowers certain blooms and we know no it sounds good it may not translate well to anyone who works with us mm -hmm. we've got this we're on top of it and but we know how important it is we may know that but that you you feel it and you feel that when we're responsive when we're like kind of you know answering whatever question, even if it's something that you think, oh, it's not a big deal, but just throw it out there. It's gonna make you feel better and it's better that we be able to just make sure we know where you're coming from. What I'm gathering from what you're saying is that communication is very important. Yes. Um, speed of getting back to them, making sure that they know you know that you're on top of everything. Speaking of that, how far in advance should a couple be coming to you to help design their wedding day? You know, it's, it's interesting because I think there's couples that I've had for a year, um, which in the flower world, I think maybe it's a little too much, but I would also say if you're getting married in September, if you're getting married in May or June, a year is not a long time because those are gonna be the months that book out fastest. Right. So if you wanna secure a vendor that you really enjoy their work, 
for certain months, book them as far like in advance as you can. But I would say like there's couples that come in, no joke, like maybe two months before and it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. I think that has always worked out sometimes for us. Like it's just a great way to bring in somebody new. And a lot of the times because they're closer, they're also like, yeah, what do you think is best? And we just roll with it. And I think it works out really well too. So I have had year, I've had two months. Um, I would say just to be safe, I'd say six months is a good, okay. a good, a good time, and that way there's room to kind of make changes. So you bring up a really good point about making changes. Um, the the amount of time that it takes to work on a wedding, mm. I mean, there is no comparison. You spend a lot more time on your wedding clients because we know that um, that this means so much more. The weight right. of it is right. higher, so we have to pay more attention and we have to be ready for. Ugh, this might have shifted. Okay, roll with it, play with it, go with it. Yes. Um, but also at the same time, make you feel comfortable as, as this is happening. I don't know flowers as well as I should, but how do the seasons make a difference with what you can get? They do make a difference. I mean, at this point, the flower world is so massive. It's so global. There's very little that we can't acquire. You know, whereas before, for a long time, peonies, peonies which is one of the most popular yeah. flowers in the wedding world and is, May to June. And that was it. For a long time, it was like you had these two months where you could get peonies. Now that's out the window. Now we get them from Chile. We get them from Alaska. We get them, I think, from New Zealand. This is where it matters, though. Whereas, yeah, sure, maybe now I can get them in August. Maybe I can get them in February. The cost is higher right? because they're coming from Chile or they're coming from New Zealand. And I don't think the quality is necessarily the same because when you're going to transport that, you're probably cutting a little earlier. You're not cutting at the right point. So when we get them, they're a little smaller than what we're used to. The, they're going to be beautiful, but they're going to cost two to three times more than in season. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the quality is going to be as wonderful. So I think certain flowers, yeah, you really, that's when the seasons matter. Most flowers can be acquired at any point now, but I think for quality, I think for price point, when you go in season, mm -hmm. you're going to have more options. And I, for most people who don't know this, of all of the markets, Chicago's got it the worst. We're landlocked, you know, <laughs> we're not Miami, we're not the West Coast, or we're not the ports. Like, so we not only have to get the stuff to these ports of entry, then they have to make it over here too. I think there's this huge misconception. When people here in season, they think, flowers are cheaper. Not the case. Okay. Not the case at all because it's still flowers in general are, are pricey. And I think that's one of the things people come and they're just like, oh, you hear a lot about like floodings and things taking place. That means your flowers are going to be more expensive. Right. You know, it takes more to grow them. Fields have to be um, resoiled. Re I don't know what the words are, but <laughs> <laughs> they have to, you know, I mean, there's damage that's done. So that's why I'm really excited that locally we're getting more farms. Yeah. that are producing like ranunculus items that we just didn't have. So obviously you're not just getting the phone call the night before the wedding and being like, we need right. flowers for tomorrow. And you're like, I got it. And you just show up and bring flowers. There's a lot more that goes into it. Yes. Tell me what goes into the whole process. So, I mean, you start with the meeting to really, and I always say, make sure that you connect with me. Mm. You, I mean, on some level you, kind of have to like me, you Absolutely. know, trust me yeah. um, that I'm going to put together this vision for your day. So we start off talking and then I tell people, let's wait until we get like maybe a couple months out from your wedding. Let's revisit. Where are we? Have things changed? Mm -hmm. Let's do that. So then we do that meeting, kind of go through logistics. And at this point, really, it's a matter of how involved am I in your process? How extensive is your setup? It can be highly involved and require multiple days, mm -hmm. or it can be as simple as here's a drop off. It really depends on what your needs are, what your budget is. If you don't need like rigging the day before or whatever or days in advance, usually the way it runs is, you know, we do the drop off of the personals the day of the team handles like setup of the ceremony. If there's a room flip, we stay through, do that break down the night before. So we are there for you the entire day. Like we are there for you for your day. This is so, phenomenal. Yeah. So it's a lot involved. This is amazing. Like, I, I mean, I really hope everyone else is learning everything, but I am learning a metric ton of stuff. Um, and it's making me, like the next wedding I shoot, I know I'm going to go gonna and just go. View it differently. This is a lot of work that went into <laughs> it's this. It's a lot of work. 
Like, and I think you understand that as well. Like right now with you setting up all the pieces, everything involved, like I thought you'd come with a camera and we're just like, you know, and it's just so much more. And I think everybody, we know our craft, mm -hmm. but I think for Correct. people who don't do this day in and day out, a lot of the times it's like you think flowers are simple. Here's a pretty vase. There's a lot. Again, I mean, we're not even, I mean, we talked about, like briefly, I talked about kind of how we get together and do the vision and then mm -hmm. the day of how we set up, you know, and it was so easy for me to gloss over the processing during the week. I'm like, hello. Nice. I'm like, we process all week long. We're taking care of your flowers all week long. It's not like they get here and boom, they're ready for design. Sometimes yeah. it's like, depending on the look you want, I want to blow them out, which means I need those suckers to be like huge. What, what does that mean? That means I put them in warm water. I need them as big as possible because they come sometimes really, really fresh cut, tight. Really? So we blow them out. And that's what I, I call it that. But it's essentially we kind of care for them, mm -hmm. you know, treat them, change out the water. If it needs to be warmed constantly, um, we do that until we get the look we want. Some flowers are easier to work with for that. And other flowers like don't require that. But yeah, like if you want a really like kind of full petal leaf effect, mm -hmm. that doesn't come like that. Like we need to make sure we're taking care of them. And it's a fine balance because then if you do it too much, you don't want the flowers to like just go bad right. on the day of the wedding. So it really is a balance. So all week long, it's like we're working on your wedding all week in addition to the work that we did prior. So what are the, like the average going price? And I know there's a wide right. range. But what are some like average prices? For I would design? say, and I think this is key, especially for people looking for a full service wedding. And when we say full service, what that entails is that we're going to set up your reception. Mm -hmm. It's not just a drop off like you, because there are weddings where they're like, no, it's just 10 tables, an arrangement. That is a drop off. That means okay. we go, boom, they're done we're out versus where there is a setup where we have to do kind of like the ceremony. Mm -hmm. And if the reception is taking place in the same on site, flip the room, you right. know, which means we have staff ready. That's considered a full service wedding. I would say to when you start talking about full service, probably you want to start, I mean, really 4,000. And I will say there's going to be other Chicago florists will say that might be on the lower side, but mm -hmm. I think you can definitely do it starting at 4,000. I would say for us, we say the average is between like five and seven. Okay. And I mean, these are beautiful weddings, but mm -hmm. we're not talking installation pieces. Um, once you're talking about installation pieces where you're suspending florals from ceilings, where you're doing flower walls, that I would say you need to go be ready to go 12K and up. I mean, okay. because anything like that, the amount of labor, mm -hmm. uh, the amount of flour, the preparation, everything, like that's really, that's taking you to a whole nother level. We have no problem if somebody comes in and they're like, oh, we love your work. We just kind of want the personals, like the bridal, the bridesmaids, that's perfectly fine. We, lo I love doing bouquets, that's my jam. I love doing that. So I think when you're talking to a vendor and you're price shopping, as everyone should. Yeah. When, when you first sit down, you should work out a budget. You should talk about what's what you want versus what you can do. Right. And then you should always compare apples to apples. Exactly. So someone at a grocery store is not the same as someone at a full service floral design. Right. Our, I mean, there's so many differences, like overheads are different, um, mm. capital, what they have, their buying power is different. And that's a very different experience. That's not a custom personalized experience. That's a, here's your bulk order. There you go. Here's a menu. Yeah, of what they're you not going to tell you, here are four different blush hues that I think are perfect for you. They're like, blush, oh, you mean pink, done. And I'm sorry, there is no bride I've worked with that was okay with just pink being considered blush. Yeah. So I know like five to 10 blush hues that I think might be like, are you an apricot kind of blush? Are you a lavender kind of blush? Or are you a more nude kind of blush? But my point is you don't get that when you go to any larger, mm -hmm. co even companies sometimes, but really, like I said, yeah, like then partially kind of why we left the retail world, because how do you compare with 9.99, 13.99 bouquets right. from Costco, from Whole Foods, from, you know, so we knew we're not going to, that's okay, that's mm -hmm. not who we are, but you know what? I know all of my rose varieties and I know exactly what looks good and that's what you're gonna get. And you're gonna get the personalized kind of uh, approach the custom because it is unique each one is approached uniquely it's not like oh you yeah this we're just gonna do what we did about like a couple months back exactly you know there is no set formula the formula changes every wedding so you adjust to it so it's made specifically for you and your you know your the couple's needs mm -hmm. like what do what do they need I really think 
if the vendor, someone you connect with, if you enjoy their work, the value is there. Yes. And I think one of the things we, we hear back and we're happy to hear back from clients is that they walked out of here just kind of feeling like they were in good hands. Like, she's good. She's yeah. got this. They, they're going to do what they have to do. They're going to get it done. And they just kind of let me do my work. And I feel like that's kind of what you pay for too. The right. experience, um, the fact that I'm not taking, you know, 20 weddings a weekend, that your wedding is really, really special to me because I, all of my clients are special to me. You know, especially if you're asking for specific varieties, mm -hmm. the prices are just going to be higher. I mean, that's just how it is. If you are comfortable with saying pink and getting whatever and getting whatever and getting pink, whatever pink yeah. is, um, then that's different. But no, we're, we're trying to be exact. We're yeah. trying to be like precise. So when a couple comes to you, what are some good questions that a couple should ask? They should start asking themselves before they get to me. Like a lot of the times this will help, like, especially if they're like, whether, whatever their attire is, if you come with me and this is kind of like, whether it's your dress, this is what I'm leaning towards. That already sets a tone. That's going to already tell me what, what your style kind of is. Yeah. Ask yourself to like budget, kind of have an overall idea of what you mm -hmm. want to spend and kind of have some notion. You may not know at all, but I do, I try to send some info prior so that you're not exactly like blown away and be like, wait, we didn't see this coming. And ask yourself, what do you want flowers to do for your day? Like, do you want them That's to play? That's a good question. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. That's a very good question. Yeah, like what role do you want them to play? Because for some people, like they'll pick venues like say, you know, the Gold Coast room at the Drake. It's very like dramatic. There's a lot going on. And now people do do a lot there too, but you can get away with possibly doing very minimal. Mm. But then you pick a blank space and then maybe the flowers have to play a really critical role. So as when you're looking at venues, be, based on what you pick, yeah. usually you've already picked your venue by the time you got to us. Ask yourself to then how critical are flowers in that space? Mm -hmm. And then flexibility. Like, I mean, if you come in and you know, the budget is whatever, then ah, then we do whatever, right? That's perfect. Let's discuss hanging right. greenery and all of this stuff. But if you come in and you're like, oh, I have a tight budget, um, be flexible, like be flexible mm -hmm. and give me kind of leeway to see, okay, what can we do um, with this? Um, and I, I, I always tell people like, I mean, I would say your bridal bouquet is like, tends to be the piece that gets photographed the most. Mm -hmm. So let's really not kind of skimp on that. Let's make that gorgeous. And there's, I have this kind of like love hate, but I don't want Pinterest to do for my client is to dictate, this is what you, this is how it has yes. to look. No, let that kind of be what, it shows me what you gravitate towards and what you enjoy, mm -hmm. but never seek that, never seek to recreate what you find because this is your wedding. This is not going to be this wedding here. So it's going to, and then it's not the same thing. Like I'll get pictures from wineries in California. I would love to be able to do that here, but if we're like in a closed space here in Chicago, we can do something to get that feel, but it's never going to translate right. exactly the same, right. the tone. You know? So like when they're first starting out and they're first planning, mm -hmm. take into account the floral design when you're when looking you're, at your venue. Yes, some spaces are going to require more. Right. Um, and that's fine if you if you have the budget for it, that's fantastic. If you want to play with it, that's right. one of the reasons kind of couples like that black space, blank space, because it feels like they can do whatever they want with it. Then it's but a then, canvas. Exactly, and that's beautiful, but that means there's more involved. So when a couple sits down, they're asking these questions, they're going over everything, what are some things couples should look for or be aware of in a floral design contract? Substitutions, I think, are something I'd like to my my couples okay. to know. I'm very like very fortunate. A lot of them, my couples don't necessarily come in with a very specific. I need to have this mm. variety of garden rose. Da da da. I think in general they have a feel they want captured, but there are couples like you know who want who really really their favorite flower is hyacinth. Okay, that's fine. Point is. Flowers are natural things that are, that are growing that we don't know what their state is going to be 100%. We can't tell you for sure they're going to be perfect on this day. Or like we had an incident where, yeah, there was, I think it was like flooding in Thailand and we were supposed to do like fuchsia mokara orchids. They were all gone. They were all gone. Like there was you just, you couldn't get them. So we put in the contract substitutions um, where we're going to do our best to give you exactly what we discussed. Mm -hmm. But if it's not available, we're gonna still be in line with your vision. So it's not like you're gonna get, we're gonna substitute orchids like with a carnation or something. Right, something So we're gonna be different. consistent, you okay. know, 
but that that can happen. Yeah. Um, I think another thing that's important within the contract too is, you know, especially for summer and winter weddings where the weather can be pretty extreme. These, like, once again, they're flower, they're living things. So in the winter, we, you know, we pack them, but obviously if you go out and it's like below zero with your flowers, know that we can't be responsible for the, the, the condition they're in. Right. And same thing with, with the summer, if it's extremely hot, that's gonna be a lot on your flowers. Smart. So it's just something to think about, you know, that, that things that you know, we people just kind of aren't thinking like, oh, I mean, you're sweating, but you don't think necessarily about your flowers. Yeah, flowers you are know, fine. So flowers they're, are they're, fine. Yeah. Most wedding vendors, they reserve your date. Mm. So that's it. I'm like for us, we're going to take two, maybe max three weddings a weekend. So once I've reserved your date, you know, you're locked in, which means I'm turning down other inquiries. So we do have it in the contract that you can't decrease your contract by more than 15%. And that, you know, and I think it was just something we've learned because at, like earlier on, like they started off with, you know, a certain budget and then as the wedding planning progressed, decided right. I'm cutting off the reception and we just lost 50, 60% of that budget and turned away other clients. Correct. So be mindful of that too. And that in the contract, it will say, you know, along the lines, you can't reduce. Now you mentioned perfection and something I love to bring up with all my couples and any couple I talk to. And of course on the show is the idea that you can plan right. a year, two years, you can be planning your whole life for a wedding, but know something's gonna go wrong. Right. I have never seen a reception start at, at uh, Exactly, time. Yeah. I've never seen dinner come out at exactly 7.15. It doesn't happen. And I was, even right now, I was a little hesitant to use the word perfection because I think that just has right. to be not something that you're right. necessarily, like it has to be this way. I think, I, I know I put that pressure on myself for, you know, we because all we do. all do. Yes. We put that pressure on just because we want to be, we have to want to give the best that we can. Right. But exactly, there has to be that, that knowledge that not everything is going to be. Right. And so I think going into your day, I always tell my couple, don't answer your phone. Don't, you, you just drink whatever you're drinking and just enjoy it and know that, You've hired professionals who are going to troubleshoot and are going to do whatever they have to. Um, and just let that go. And I always say the worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to get married to the love of your life. Right. Not a bad day. Not a bad day at all, no. And when those small little things do go wrong, I always refer to it like jazz music. The only time you're ever going to know that something was off key mm -hmm. was if the musician stops and says, that was wrong. That was Let sorry, me my bad. Right. <laughs> redo. And that's why you get vendors <laughs> right. is because a professional wedding vendor not only knows how to fix that situation, right. but they know how to do it so that the bride and groom will never know. They won't even know. And exactly. the rest of the room will, will, will never yeah. know. If a couple wanted to go with your service or go with a floral design in general, uh, what are some ways that they can save money? Keep your wedding small. Like, and I mean, I'm not saying you have to have like a 60 person wedding, but I do think once you're looking into guest counts in the 200s, it's just really hard to, to kind of really be flexible. I mean, because you're talking about so many tables, so much going on. I do think the more intimate a wedding, obviously, like there's a greater chance of having a smaller budget. Mm -hmm. um, I also think, ask yourself, like, are you comfortable with just kind of one concept, clean, beautiful concept for all the tables uh, in terms of centerpieces. Um, because the more variety you bring in, if we do like three different versions and there's more candle treatment, right. that's right. more items that are coming into your prep wedding, work, more, more prep. Setup. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it really depends on, you know, how detailed you want it mm -hmm. um, to be. I adore greenery. I love it. But I think, um, yeah, people kind of think that that's like, less expensive and it can be but it also depends on what you want that greenery to do like if you want it to be a halo above it's still a halo like yeah. it's it's still going to be pricey so i think just um listening to uh my your floor suggestions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and saying okay these i think will give you kind of maximum benefit and and then we can just kind of work around with that we try to repurpose as much as possible yeah. so if you want something to frame you um for the altar for the mm -hmm. ceremony mm -hmm. once we flip the room then we just say you know let those pieces then become guest table 
right. centerpieces or we line the, the aisle with candles. Oh, let those candles go on your guest tables. So we do our best to do that as well. So if you're in a space where you're going to do a room flip, we try to see what can we use that is going to be reception decor and use that for your ceremony. So it really is kind of trying to do two things. And I think that helps too in trying to kind of save costs. So Zenia, thank you so much for sitting down of with us. Of course, this, this has was been fun. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, if someone were so inclined to reach out to you to pick your brain, to ask you questions or to book with you, what's the best way they can reach you? You know, definitely email. So you can email us at info at flordelmonte.com. Follow us on Instagram. I tend to kind of post a lot there. And so for our Instagram, we're at Flor del Monte Inc. So I really, um, I love sharing um, kind of my visions on there and then pictures from past weddings. So I think that's a great way to get in touch with us as well as to kind of see what our style is. Perfect. Thank you again so Thank much. Thank you. We hope this episode of Vendors helps you on your wedding planning. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and to share to make sure you and your fellow planning couples don't miss a single episode. If you enjoyed watching this video, be sure to check out our entire conversation in the podcast. Be sure to check out all of our episodes about these amazing wedding industry professionals. We'll see you next time on Vendors. Vendors is produced and edited by Night Owls Media. More information can be found at nightowlsmedia.com.